برنامه اینا نگار سر خود نگاه میکنید مجله اجتماعی سیاسی که به زبانهای انگلیسی و فارسی روی کانال جدید پخش میشه سلام به همگی من مریم نمازی هم و من فریبوز پویا هستم در برنامه این هفته مصاحبه ای داریم با ویکتوریا گوگنهایم در رابطه با هنر و علم در زم در رابطه با اعدام ها در ایران حقوق بشر اسلامی زن انگلیسی که در عربستان سعودی گرگان گرفته شده کشتار ناموسی در پاکستان چگونه میشه از مدارس موسیقی دزدی کرد و اشکالی نداره این فتوای احمقانه هفتمونه و جنبش روشنگری در افغانستان با ما باشید در هفته که گذشت اخبار رسید از اینکه جمهوری اسلامی ایران و عربستان سعودی بین این دو تا کشور 350 نفر اعدام کردن البته این اعدام هایی که با خبریم ازشون و اینکه بعد از چین دوباره ایران دومین کشوریه که بیشترین اعدام ها رو داره و خب میبینیم که این ادامه همون سی و چند سال این حکومت اعدام پشتر از اعدام دقیقاً جالبه که جمهوری اسلامی و عربستان سعودی با هم دارن مقا... مسابقه کشتار رو انجام میدن همه جریانات مذهبی جریانات اسلامی دیتاتوریا کشتار مردم اعدام مردم را به عنوان یک وسیله سرکوب و کنترل جامعه و در وهله اول مخالفین خودشون ببینن آدمای اکثر آدمایی که اعدام میشن بیگناه هستن کسایی هستن تو ایران فقط به خاطر گرفتن 5 گرم هروئین اعدام میشن تو ایران واقعا فکر بکنین چه جامعه ای رو جامعه خشونت بار و خشونت آمیزی رو اسلامی تو جامعه ایران و عربستان سعودی خب به وجود آورده و خیلی هم مشخصه یعنی تحقیقات زیادی شده در این مورد که کشورهایی که اعدام میکنن ایالت هایی مثلا توی آمریکا چین ایران عربستان سعودی این کشورها همین چیز جون انسان چقدر ارزشش پایین تره و خشونت چقدر بالاست تو این نوع جوامه به خاطر اینکه خب اعدام یه نوع قتل عمد بدترین نوع قتل و یه دولت داره انجام میده برای کل شهروندان که واقعا میشه دید که چه تاثیرات منفی داره روی یه جامعه دقیقا وقتی اینو مقایسه میکنیم با بیان کسایی رو مثل آقای لاریجانی که رئیس کمیسیون حقوق بشر اسلامی تو ایرانه وقتی نگاه میکنه ایشون میگن ادالت از اسلام میاد بیرون در کنار شب و روز دارن اعدام میکنن تو جامعه ایران هر روز البته این ادالت اسلامی هستش دقیقا. از نظر خودشون و یقعا نشون میده چقدر سیستم فکری و فرهنگی این جامعه فاسده و خیلی میتونه اینشون با وقاحت کامل توی یه دوربین تلویزیون نگاه بکنه و بگه که این ادالت اسلامیه و جوهر ادالت از این حقوق بشر اسلام میاد بیرون واقعا حقوق بشر با اسلام یعنی واقعا تناقض خیلی پایه‌ای دارن یعنی نمیتونن توی یه جمله به نظرم با هم استفاده بشن مثل نمیدونم حقوق فمینیزم اسلامی یا دموکراسی اسلامی یعنی اصلا به هم نمیخورن به هیچ وقت انسان جایی نداره در این سیستم فکری دقیقا و خب خبر دیگه هم که شنیدیم در رابطه با تعدادی از قتل های ناموسی توی پاکستانه و خب میدونیم این قتل ها همیشه ادامه داشتن و تو خود ایران هم اتفاق میفته واقعا یه نوع قتل فجیهی علیه خصوصا زنان زنانی که سر از نظر خانوادهشون سرپیچی کردن از رسم و رسومایی که باستی رعایت میکردن و خب جالبی این داستان اینه که خب خیلی اعتراضات زیادی تو پاکستان صورت گرفته آره خانم... به خاطر همین قضیه دقیقاً خانمی که توی بلوچستان پاکستان خانم قندیل که به وسیله برادرش کشته شده بود و اخیراً یک آقای دو تا خواهرش رو گرفته کشته به خاطر اینکه اینا میخواستن با کسای دیگه رابطه داشته باشن با کسای دیگه ازدواج کنن کسای دیگه رو دوست داشته باشن که ایشون مخالفش بودن ولی در کنار این جنایت ها و در واقع سیستم عقب مونده 
کشتار قتلای ناموسی همیشه اعتراضات وسیع وجود داره مردم اعتراض میکنن و به اهمیت داره که این اعتراضات و این مخالفت ها به رسمیت شناخته بشه مادر خانم قندیل میگفت که این پسر من اصلا جرم کرده کارش چیز کرده و باید محکومش بشه خود همین پدر این دو تا دخترم که اخیراً برادرشون کشتاتشون اسمشون هست کوسار و گوزار بیبی پدره میگفت که واقعا چه جنایت کرده چه جنایتی کرده پسرش که این دو تا دختر رو کشته و, و واقعا خانوادهشون رو از بین برده و خب نشون میده که خیلی ها مخالف این نوع قتل هستن و چقدر واقعا ضد انسانیه و یه خبری هم اخیرا اومده از یه دختر جوون انگلیسی که یه تکست داده به یکی از دوستاش که تو انگلیسه و گفته که پدرش عملا داره توی یه قفص زنونیش میکنه توی عربستان سعودی و الان یه کمپینی سازمان داده شده برای برگشت ایشون به انگلیس به خاطر اینکه تابعیت انگلیس رو دارن ولی خب پدرشون از عربستان سعودیه این... اسمش از امینای های ج... جعفری جعفری ایشون البته خب کیس شما این برنامه نان گلسور خدش حمایت کرده و میخواد پشتیبانی بکنه از و همه پیشنهاد میکنیم که از کیس ایشون پشتیبانی بکنن ولی این خود این قضیه نشون میده که چقدر وضعیت زنان توی کشور مثل عربستان سعودی توی ایران مشکله و واقعا همه میخوان رها بشن از این وضعیت و این خودش این یک نمونه جالبیه که وضعیت زنان رو تو اون جوامع نشون میده اخیران من با ویکتوریا گوگنهای مصاحبی داشتم ایشون یک هنرمند واقعا جالبیه کار نقاشی بدن میکنه چندین جایزه برده و نکات خیلی مهمی در رابطه با رابطه علم هنر و در زم در مورد بدن به عنوان یک ابزار رهایی صحبت میکنه با ما باشید Hello, Victoria. Thank you for Hello. joining us. Uh, well, thank you for inviting me. <laughs> I wanted to uh, talk to you about uh, the brilliant work you do, body painting. You're an award-winning body painter. You've done a million great things. Tell me first about why you do body painting. Okay, well, um, you could say I'm under compulsion, if you like, because um, I started when I was very, very young. Um, so I started around six or so doing makeup, and then um, I had my first set of face paints, I think at about nine years old, and then it just sort of progressed downwards, and it's always stayed with me. And um, the more I got into body paint, the more I was excited about it, because it's actually the oldest art form in the world. It's 300,000 years old, and it's actually... I find it very empowering to be part of this really long tradition of, of people, you know, painting on themselves and, and experimenting. Um, and I, I love that I can just use this for um, pretty much any medium that I want. So if I want to um, express a scientific idea, I can do this on a body because it's the most immediate, visceral form of communication you have with people. You know, rather than it being something very abstract on canvas, if it's immediately relatable, then people they respond to it so much, so much more readily. And I find that um, it's that connection that really kind of keeps me going. And the body art world never stands still. So there's always new innovations, there's new technologies you can use, there's new things you can, you know, even end up painting. You can paint for protest, you can paint for anything you want. And um, I don't think I'm ever going to get tired of it. So that, that's why it's one, it's one long, lifelong compulsion to just paint, I think. <laughs> your favorite things that you've painted oh wow um so my first one is probably you know you know i've painted lawrence krauss which is you know um the guy who wrote the physics of star trek a universe from nothing um that was fantastic for me and uh my um, my next favorite is probably um on a late friend of mine sean jones um and i did this to raise breast cancer awareness and i um it's called immortal enemies and um it's an accurate depiction of um, cancer cells that are attempting to metastasize. And um, I wanted to basically paint this because, first of all, his mother died of breast cancer. And um, this is a charity that's very important to me as well because uh, my grandmother died of breast cancer too. So um, I wanted to do something that was beautiful, that would really just, you know, convey how, um, you know, how much this 
this disease can take away the you know a someone's sense of personhood and also um, do something about it. So um, when I sell a piece of a, a copy of Immortal Enemies now, um, you know the money goes to um, you know breast cancer charities, um, and I just. Yeah, I, I think that's probably, yeah, they're my two favourites, I'd say, at the point, yes, at this point. And you, you do quite a lot of protest art, you, you talk about that as well, and how, why is protest art so important, particularly when it comes to the body? Well, um, I would say that, you know, if you are expressing bodily autonomy, that is something that is really important because there's so many factors in the world that seek to either objectify you as a woman or keep you down as a human being. Um, I mean, if you look at the current political climate here, um, you know, it's, it's horrible, it's oppressive and people feel that and they get disconnected and they feel disenchanted and disillusioned and they feel like they can't do something and you can. If you are painting yourself, it's a brush, paints and you and no one can tell you what to do. No one can say, oh, you shouldn't be painting that. You're the one making that decision. There is no middleman telling you what you can and can't do with your body. And so this is why I love using body paint in terms of that. I, I know this is why I've done topless activism. You know, this is why, um, you know, I've obviously painted you twice. Um, and I want to carry on doing that. I want people to realise just how powerful this art form is. Because if you're confronted with a painted body or, you know, in the case of Spencer Tunic, for example, several hundred painted bodies, you can't ignore that, you know, that's on the street, like in broad daylight, this person is painted and in front of you, there's no getting away from it. So, you know, for me, it's like, it's the ultimate art of protest, if you like, because, you know, there's going to be something as well when you're working with protesters and you're, you know, you're, if you like, I, I don't want to use it in a non-scientific way, but there's, there's kind of a social energy, if you like, when, you know, there's things kind of going on and you're kind of sensing the atmosphere, I think is the best way of, of uh, saying it, because we're very social animals and there's things that can come out, can come out in a protest painting um, that you wouldn't, you know, on the day, that you wouldn't necessarily do in a studio. Um, and it can be much more powerful, much more immediate, much more visceral. And that's why I think it's, it's so important to carry on doing that. And that's why I enjoy doing protest paintings, because I think, you know, it's a way of almost um, ethically shocking people into realising there is a problem that needs to be addressed. Mm. So I hope that's a good enough answer. Yeah, no, definitely. And what, so ca carrying on from that is, from your perspective, the importance of art mm. in raising awareness and shocking. Yes. Um, well, the thing is, um, you know, art is one of the oldest tools we've got, really, in terms of communication, I think. And I find that, as well, I mean, if you look at art and science, they share a common ancestor in the human imagination. Art is a way of keeping imagination active and alive and engaged. And we are very, very visual creatures. You know, that's one of the oldest senses I believe we have. So if you're engaging this, um, you know, there's a, some really interesting research actually from Jean-Pierre Changeau uh, of art as an entire brain experience. Um, and it's actually on his Carter lecture, um, where if you look at a piece of art, um, you have a, a limbic sense that happens. So you have your limbic system kicking in. And you go, what's that? And then once you sort of solve the puzzle as, as to what it is, your prefrontal cortex kicks in and you start acting, you start asking questions about the work and, oh, how did they do this? And why did they do this? And what's the motivation of the artist? And then immediately, um, and this has been confirmed on brain scan, you know, this isn't something I'm speculating. Um, immediately, you've got people active and engaged in something that's just in front of them. And so just from all of these factors, really, I mean, I'd love to go into, into much more detail, but I don't have much time. Um, from all of these factors, I think it's just a really integral part of the human condition. It's one of the reasons we were able to um, explore altered mind states as well um, on the Pleistocene. Um, so there's been lots of kind of cave paintings as well of um, you know human beings and animals having shared experiences, if you like. So um, you know they have both been depicted side by side, um, both with their hair standing on end and that sort of thing. And so you know that's conveying a shared experience through the medium of art. And so you can also do this in a sense of community as well. You can get lots of people together and and paint as one. You know that's a massive you know possibility for change. So you know with all of these factors i i can't see how this can be left out it's it's vital i think so i think art can be the lifeblood of protest if you like yeah definitely as a final question you do a lot of uh, your body painting 
uh, in relation to scientific issues. Mm. There, there will be people who will say that there's a contradiction between art and science. Mm. What's your view on that? Well, um, I would say, you know, like I've said before, I, I think um, art and science share a common ancestor in the human imagination. If there isn't any imagination, you can't actually hypothesize. There's no hypothesizing. And um, I think what art has done historically in human evolution is give us a place to actually um, think about ideas and experiment. So um, if you look at, um, for, for example, um, Neanderthal makeup kits, there's different fat, oil and pigment ratios in these particular things. And when you look at things like this, it's clear that they were using that as a tool for experimentation. And, you know, that's sort of a precursor, if you like, to the scientific method. Um, and, you know, I think artists and scientists, they're, all, they're both very curious. Um, artists are especially information hunter-gatherers. If they want to do something, they will... You, there's no stopping them. They will research the hell out of something. You know, it will be all-consuming. So just like, you know, just like Newton would be all-consuming and be, you know, really excited about something and get um, very um, curious about something and uh, doggedly pursue the idea you know, artists have that determination. Um, and what I think is just a crying shame is that probably because of some modern art, people think that art is no longer relevant and is somehow useless and doesn't have any business kind of conveying, um, you know, scientific ideas. But actually, I think that um, art is one of the best ways in which to convey scientific ideas because what you're doing is you're you're being almost a visual translator of the medium if you like instead of someone who has no science background sitting down and reading a scientific paper and probably getting lost in it um, I would encourage people to try of course um, what you can do is um, take that information and create something so beautiful and so compelling that people immediately want to know about it because again you're you're kind of tickling their, their visual cortex um, so, I mean, one of my um, pieces was called Some of Her Parts, and I had, um, this was about the war of gene patenting in America. Um, that was, it was raging at the Supreme Court at the time. And, um, you know, so I had neurons firing off, I had someone's real sequence genome on my model's arm, um, I had a picture of an X chromosome, I had DNA strand, you know, like, everything I could put in there to kind of convey this message, I did. And I had people literally coming to me going, oh my God, this is amazing. Can you take me through everything you've done? And I'm thinking, this is brilliant. These people want to be educated. And I, I remember as well, I had um, one fantastic experience when I was uh, talking at a mini exhibition of mine and I painted a, a 3D anglerfish on someone um, as part of a body paint called Elegantum Queen of the Deep. And um, this person came to me and said, I didn't even know these fishes existed. <laughs> I thought, this is amazing. And now this person wants to be a deep sea diver like he want, and, and actually study oceanography. And that's from looking at someone who's been painted with an anglerfish on their chest. I mean, that's just a fundamental force for good. I mean, and a force for change and for science education. And so they, they should be bedfellows they should be celebrated because they have so much that they can give each other you can't have art without you know science and materials engineering and the latex technology because you know there's so many um, technology based artists and science based artists out there now and you can't really convey science without at least some form of visual appeal in art I think so embrace it communicate with each other and you know just welcome each other into your communities, ask questions, challenge each other and, you know, work together just to create something bigger and bolder and better because, you know, that's the way forward, I think. Thank so, yes. you. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. امیدوارم از مصاحبه با ویکتوریا گوگن هم خوشتون اومده باشه. واقعا یک زن جالبیه. حرفای خیلی جالبی زد. نکات خیلی مهمی رو مطرح کرد. و نکات خیلی زیادی رو مطرح کرد توی این مدت کوتاه. برای من خب یکی از نکاتی خیلی مهم بود همین نقش خب بدن نقش بدن به خصوص بدن زن و, و کلا بدن و وقتی میبینیم که بدن همیشه یک نوع میدانیه برای جنگ مذهب و فرهنگ و طبقه حاکم عملا روی بدن زن به خصوص همیشه یه نوع جنگی داره صورت میگیره و خب ویکتوریا در رابطه با بدن به عنوان یک ابزار رهایی صحبت کرد و اهمیتش در, در مبارزه برای یک زندگی بهتر دنیای بهتر رهایی آدم از تمام سطوح مختلف کنترل 
جامعه روی بدن و به خصوص بدن زن ولی نکته دیگه در کنار نکات زیبای دیگر رو که ویکتوریا گفت این رابطه بین علم و هنر و چطور اینا به هم خیلی نزدیکن نقش تخیل تخیل انسان در رابطه با فرضیه به وجود بردن فرضیه داشتن و چطور هنر خیلی کنجکاوه و نزدیکیش به علم به نظر این نکات خیلی جالب بود نکات مهم خیلی زیادیش بود ولی این برای من خیلی سترایکینگ و جالب بود فتوه احمقان این هفته از ایران خب خوب میدونیم که جمهوری اسلام ایران یک واقعا منبع غنی از فتوه های احمقان است چه از دولتش همجوری همجوری ماشین, ماشین فتوای احمقانه چه تو دولت چه قاضیاشون و غیره و خب این بار خبر اومده از یک مدرسه موسیقی که خانم آزیتا بخشمند ایشون گفته بود که یکی یه سری وسایل از این مدرسه موسیقی دزدیده بود و خب وقتی که رفتن دادگاه فکر میکنین دادگاه چه تصمیم میگرفت؟ نمیدونم شما بگین اینجا خیلی عجب غریبه و قاضی گفته که گوش کنین اینو قاضی گفته که اشکال نداره اون کس دوزده رو که گرفتن گفته آزاده میتونه بره به خاطر اینکه کاری که شما میکنین زدن موسیقی و تعلیم موسیقی و زیبایی اینا کارهایی که حرامه, حرامه. و دزدیدن از کارهای حرام اشکال نداره حلاله مثل که الان مثل این میشه که دستور دادن که الان همه مراکز موسیقی تمام باشگاه های موسیقی تمام مدارس موسیقی هر کس بلش میخواد هر چی میخواد داره برداره و خواهد بگه It's okay خیلی جالبه موسیقی حرامه ولی اعدام تو ملعه عام خوبه جالبه حلال. حلاله دزدی اسلامی خیلی جالبه آخه به خاطر اینکه اینا وقتی از رؤسای بالاشون تا پایینشون دکل نفت و نمیدونم انواع اقسام چیزا رو جامعه رو میدوزن دیگه فکر کنین که برای سر موسیقی و مدارس موسیقی میاد دیوانه ها لحظه زیبای زندگی این هفته از افغانستان و جنبش روشنایی روشنگری از اونجا این مبارزه که در مقابل حملات تروریستی که در کابل صورت گرفت در حین تظاهرات هزاره ها برای حقوق مدنی میدونیم که بیش از 80 نفر کشته شدن 200 و چند نفر مجروح دقیقا نگاه کنین تفاوت و پاسخی رو که جامعه افغانستان و هزاره ها به کشتار تروریسم اسلامی دادن روشنگری رو بردن در مقابل این دارن تصویر میکنن و این یکی از زیباترین لحظه های جامعه افغانستان ما همیشه تو این برنامه گفتیم در کنار بربریت اسلامی و جنت عقب مونده مردم معترض هستن و در واقع خواست اکثریت مردم جامعه روشنگری رهایی از مذهبه و این رو باید گرامی داشت و این رو به رسمیت شناخت امیدوارم از برنامه این هفته خوشتون اومده باشه تا هفته آینده روزها و شبای خیلی خوبی داشته باشین Goodbye. And I'm Fadi Bospuya. We're hosting a program called Bread and Roses. It's a weekly program that's broadcast in Persian and English in the Middle East and North Africa, primarily Iran as well. And it's also shown on YouTube internationally. And we've been doing this since last May. We're coming up to our 
years anniversary and yeah. we, we've had quite a lot of fun making these videos. We discussed taboo breaking, free thinking ideas. The Islamic regime of Iran has called us immoral and corrupt. And that's why the, you need to support us. We are and the vo alternative voice in Middle East and North Africa. Of corruption and immorality. So do support us. Here's a short video from Patreon that explains how you can help us with even just one dollar a week. That's nothing. Support us. Patreon lets fans become patrons of their favorite artists and content creators. It's different than Kickstarter because it's not about one big project that requires lots of funding. It's more for bloggers or YouTubers or webcomics, anyone who creates on a regular basis. Here's how it works. When you become a patron, you're agreeing to give an artist a tip of an amount you set every time they release a piece of content, whether it's a new song, a video, or a recipe. You can set a monthly maximum to make sure that you're always within your budget. Choose an amount, enter your payment information, and you're done. Becoming a patron allows you to view and post in the artist's stream. And in exchange for your support, artists offer additional patron packages, which might include monthly Google Hangouts, music production tutorials, pre-sale concert tickets, or anything they can offer as a way to say thanks. Patreon, empowering a new generation of content creators.